time. Uh, it's gonna be an interesting episode of Chill Time. Given the fact that is, uh, well... <sighs> we, we don't get through a week without drama, do we? Okay, like I I said there's, oh, this one's gonna be a bit quick, not much drama at all in the last few weeks. And... We have drama. Now... A lot of you guys are gonna be expecting me to go off about, you know, casters who should be paid more and stuff like that. But let's just get all our ducks in a row, first of all. To see the latest kind of thing that's happening. Okay, this is Reddit. So according to Squid and uh, I do not know how to pronounce his name for the fucking life of me. Uh, Pono Go, I dude. Every time I see his fucking name, I I just get it just becomes worse and worse. Okay, let's just say that. Okay, it gets worse and worse by pronunciation of it. But they suggested because they were on Snow Sweet Snow, I believe that. Cast is being paid $37.50 euro to cast a beer free in Snow Sweet So for a event with a prize pool of about 100 grand. Which, let's just turn that face down. Which is uh, quite interesting. It's less than minimum wage in Australia, if you guys want to know, because beer freeze can go on for two hours. And 37.5 is 50 euros. And actually, it's just above minimum wage in Australia. And, you know. It's, uh, they've been blacklisted from Relog and Grid for a while. They heard it from someone else, so I can only imagine why they've been blacklisted, because, yeah, let's just be real. Squid and Kieran do not like each other, okay? So I assume they must have got it from someone else, but I know Squid and Kieran do not like each other, given the fact that I got caught in the middle of their little thingo, because, like, I was the only one really contesting Vortex on uh, ESA Premier back in the day, and I got caught really in the middle of it, because he was trying to help me out to beat Vortex. Which is uh, interesting. To be fair though, I think I won that battle at the end of the day, like by uh, attrition. Um, so they've been paid thirty-five dollars euro, which is about fifty bucks Australian. If you guys are wondering with the currency conversion, it's about just above minimum wage. Minimum wage is about twenty bucks, twenty dollars Australian, and it, that is just you know, it's twelve point five for a beer one, which is below minimum wage, given that CS:GO goes for an hour, and also there's tech pause and stuff in between. And it's not an hourly rate. And we've got the biggest brains at Reddit sometimes because one guy goes, well, actually knows the biggest brain on Twitter. It's the worst take I've ever seen. The guy's like, oh, I can cast a 40 minute CSGO match. Beer one, so easy, easy $12, 50 euros. I'm sitting here going, oh God. You, you do, um, I think I remember a beer free in advance taking four hours once. And this guy wants to cast a beer free for 37.5 euros. And not to mention, like, a lot of the prep that goes into it as well, which, to be fair for me, it's not too much of a prep since I, I watch so much CSGO that I know a lot of the teams and what they do. Some of these casters don't watch so much CSGO and don't cast as much CSGO as I do. They just watch note the, the teams and get the cliff notes of it as well. Um, so let's just go through it, okay? Like, basically, a lot of people say, yeah, it's, it's good or bad, and, like, people go, it's good. And I'm going to say, like... A lot of these people are East European, like, I gotta say, this, like, comment section and Reddit is literally filled with people who are like, it's bad for me because I live in UK where, you know, you can't live off fucking uh, 13 euros an hour, which is true, I mean, 100% true, and then you got, you know, other people being like, in East Serbia, this would be a minimum wage, it's just like, come on, guys, it's like, different. it's like apples to oranges, like, you can't compare that, is this a living wage? Probably not. <laughs> And this is actually a big problem with a lot of people. Now, basically, we're going to go through both sides. We're going to go through the original tweet. We actually got double tweets here. So basically, he's talking about Kieran. I have encountered Kieran before. Like, I've encountered Kieran a few times. Uh, one time was basically, he was just telling me off at Misty, trying to get Misty to, like, enforce... Or not enforce stuff, but just, you know, grill me over, like, switching to MDL five minutes before the event started. Um, this was over me playing WoW Classic. Like, basically, I was helping Sony. If you guys don't know Sony, he's a big streamer. He set up Hero on Classic, and I was helping him level up his uh, mage because AoE grinding, stuff like that, in Felwood. And also, I was farming my Timbermore or Hold Rep. So, you know, I was like, oh, okay, you know, I didn't, like, I thought you could just switch over and then record the stats from that point onwards and then send to Misty. And I didn't know in the broadcast guidelines, it tells you not to do that. It tells you to end stream and stuff like that before so. So, basically, I outlined what I was going to do for Misty, and that's pretty much it. Now, I don't know Prono Go at all. Like, I have no interaction with him. I have interaction with Squid. My interaction has been fairly decent with Squid. Like, Squid's been pretty good to me. Sometimes he's been, like, a bit dramatic, a bit chaotic. But, like, at the end of the day, not everyone's perfect. 
So basically what happens, we got 35 euros for a BO3, 12.5 euros for a BO1, and 100 euros for the playoffs. And if you don't talk about it, you're fired. I have no idea how this is enforceable in a contract. I don't think you can do that in many, like, in many uh, in countries that you can't restrict people from, t uh, from talking about work. Um, apparently, people said you can negotiate your rates. And, you know, there's been a lot of stuff as, as well. I was a bit disappointed here as well that these sort of clauses were put in. I feel like a fair rate, like, I guess I can't, after this tweet, I did actually talk to Semler about it. Not Sem I actually didn't talk to Semler, but I listened to Semler about it. I think Semler's got a bit of a point that you got to kind of build your leverage and build your, you know, game stock and stuff like that. Because it's, he just basically says it's freelance in a nutshell. Like, you know, freelance work where, you, you know, these, most of these casters have no leverage, while Eternal J and Dweg, who casted the event, had leverage. Like, they had a lot of leverage as well. Like, you know, Eternal J and Dweg casting I Am Katowice on the C stream or whatever it was they do have a lot of leverage and like also as well this entire thing has actually helped me out a ton because i now know what to charge for bo3s and bo1s to any au team basically so just like basically convert this into 80 dollars and i'll just basically tell them straight up like you know for example for bo3 i'll charge like 70 euros 70 80 euros because i'll be most definitely getting an observer to help me out with it and i do have a lot of experience and i do and i've cast a lot of you know qualifiers and stuff like that and you know, I'm not current, kind of new to it as well. 70 and 80 is probably on the low side and playoffs probably a bit more, obviously. Um, so overall, like there's a lot of stories about Kieran and trust me, I've heard a lot of stories about him in the AU scene because uh, Mac went off, went off, uh, no Mac went off him at a pork shop. He blasted him pretty hard because uh, I think it was, he was telling off someone else in mdl and mac was just like you know just had enough like mac literally had enough at him because this is when manic and mac were back grinding back in the day now there's dean code there's a lot of people who have these stories about him mac uh went a bit pork chop here like he made a silly tweet to t time i don't think t time's been like you know t time's been a neutral party and all this um scrawny that is lingon who used to be a caster for vortex uh boq like there's a lot of people as well. And he used to be a caster as well. To be fair, I don't know much about Kieran a caster. I was just all focused on my things, okay? Now, to put some context to it, Squid and Kieran have not liked each other for a very long time. I got their instance in my DMs when Squid was DMing me quite a bit. And he definitely displayed a lot of uh, dislike for Kieran and probably vice versa as well because... Uh, uh, they, those two are basically fierce competitors with each other because like Squid used to run EFL and obviously Kieran runs Vortex and they're both, you know, casting agencies trying to get, you know, not casting agencies, but casting companies trying to get, you know, either ESA Premier in control, like I think Vortex somehow got an ESA Premier invite and basically streamed every EU match. And um, that's why that's why the AU players are a bit pissed off because Mac and uh, Manic Monday used to do it and Conky used to do it as well. Um, you still do the EU cast, and I got some concerns when I started doing some EU ESA Premier. Some people told me, like, we don't do it anymore because of Vortex and what they do. They feel like Vortex is out of place, or, or not out of place, but out of line. And they think that there's some sinister practices happening. That's why they stopped casting it and let Vortex cast it because they, uh, I'm not sure. Maybe the casters care about the views or care about the what people are watching and stuff like that. That's what's happened, okay? I didn't really care about it. Like, when I when I started casting, even if Vortex were on it, I'd put my name on it. Like, I wouldn't care too much. And I'd be just like, I'll cast it. People like it. They like it. I've got a few of my viewers, my dedicated viewers and subs who subbed to me, like my longtime sub, Nubitch, as well. A few guys in here came to my stream. Like, they switched off the Vortex stream and came to my stream, streaming ESA Premier, because my production quality was a lot better. I was playing with 720p. My microphone was a lot better, and my knowledge was a lot better. And it kind of proves that, you know... The narrative of, I, I can understand like going on HLTV and getting the viewership, like, you know, I could, being on top of viewership is really, really good. Like I've felt that multiple times and I've felt the bad end of it multiple times. But like, anyways, we should like, basically overall, a lot of these players are talking, talking about, you know, poor wages, like, you know, Machine got 200 in a uh, 2014. Um, a lot of lawyers talk about this as well. I'm trying to think who Tom Pickering is. Oh my God, I forget because I know... That's not Tom Biz. I'm very sure it's not Tom Biz, surely, because it's Tom Bismol. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's an awful take. I'm saying it. The case of them. 
Oh, yeah, I guess so. Like, I didn't agree with it. Like, I didn't really agree with it. Like, it's, it's kind of like the scenario where people want to be top on HLTV views and stuff like that. And I don't really care about that. Okay, if I'm top on HLTV views, so be it. Okay, you know. And uh, I guess say for the Australians and stuff like that, that'd be up at like 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. to cast these games so I can understand, like, you know, I'm not going to wake up for these kind of games if I'm not going to get really recognized in the end. Because in the end, like with HLTV as well, if you don't have the most viewership, your um your stream is not your vod isn't put up. Okay, like your vod isn't put up on HLTV. Now, after all, because what happened later on is that when I started casting EU ESA Premier, when even though Vortex were getting all these views, HLTV kept picking my stream and my vods to put on HLTV, which is a bit weird. Because I, I was like asking about me, like guys, like I got like thirty average viewers that game. Vortex got like two K. Like why is my vod being picked? Because it shouldn't be picked going off that mindset but I, I don't really know too much about vortex um i felt that there was something wrong there like it just felt odd to me like every time i came up to my holding screen i got it maybe a, you know before the game like maybe let's just say it's a tier two game let's just say it's a polish derby i get about 10 or 20 viewers at the holding screen and then i see like a lot of other cast or orgs and stuff like that get like 100 and 150 before like the game even starts and i'm sitting there being like is this really right? Like, do people really just wait 15 minutes before the game? You know, instead of the game starting? And that's that's what I felt weird about, okay? Like, that's what I said. I raised my concerns. That's when I started talking to the other cast. And I'm like, this just feels really weird to me because I'm not getting it. But these people are getting it on similar type of games that I'm doing. Um. So, yeah. So, basically, even some pro players have their tips in as well. I think a lot of players here as well have been... uh putting in as well um and yeah like you know tom biz is here for it so um i've got to say like a lot of these people have the stories about i'm gonna say like kieran being a little scum lord according to them as well i haven't really dealt with him i've uh seen like basically like squid's complaints about him they're kind of valid with what was happening in the moderation of that of that chat because i don't i don't i mute my own stream when i stream so i can't you know watch vortex and stuff like that um, what I heard was, um, that one of the female streamers were being constantly abused by chat. And one of the guys that did do that, I banned him from my chat. Like he was, he was in that chat. So I banned him. Um, and they were like harassing the female caster, which was very, very annoying. Like, like I, I, I was like sitting there going like, okay, wow. You know, Squid has a point. But yeah, anyway, so essentially there's a lot of things. I know Veerless was a caster for Vortex. So, because I saw her casting one time, she now cast by herself. Um, and yeah, like basically everyone's just dumping on, you know, thing over here. So it gets kind of, it gets kind of interesting. Like, man, this is like the tweet of the day. Like, I tell this guy to come join the party. So to come join and cast CSGO games, if he thinks 11 euros per beer one is uh, good money. And I'm going to tell him really quickly that it's not going to be good money. It's not going to be good for his voice either. Now, there's a lot of people dumping on him. I don't really care about the dumping on at this point. Like, I don't care at all. Um, Zesh, he's a guy that I do look up to as well. Zesh is a very, very good uh, mentor and caster. And yeah, like the weird thing is, is he's threatening people in my opinion. Like the weirdest thing here is not the tweets, but it's this part here. Like, I mean, come on, dude. Like, dude, like, threatening your staff to fire them if they spread, like, stuff about their pay is not a good look, bro. And you're going to get unionized so quickly. And you're going to be essentially shot out of the fucking scene by having those sort of practices by people who are going to stand up to this bullshit. Okay? I'm like, don't do this, man. And I know he's been known in the scene in, in, for a long time to do this sort of shit. But just, like, you're going to get told to fuck off, okay? And trust me, it's not going to be pretty, okay? It's not going to be pretty at all. You got Richard Lewis talking about this as well. When you get Richard Lewis talking about this, no doubt Fora is going to be involved, and your fucking ceiling to get into that pro league is going to be fucking shut off and cut off at the knees, okay? You don't, you don't fucking, like, shit... You don't bring... Oh, what is it? You don't shit on other talent and expect to be magically casting tier one events. Like, what do you bloody expect? Like, you know, you've got a bad reputation because you undercut people and you pay people like $3 and $5 a beer free, a beer one euros. Like, dude, man, like, 
I actually asked someone this. I was like, why doesn't he do his own casting? Like, just do it himself. Like, if he's going to offer dislow wages, like, you can't, like, you know, you can't be, like, making money off ads, which he probably does. He probably runs a ton of ads during the breaks and stuff like that. And then barely share it with any of your casters, dude. Like, you can't have your cake and eat it too, in my opinion, okay? This is me talking about Vortex, by the way, of how much Vortex is getting paid. Now, he left, and I have no idea where Vortex went. I was just, I'm going to be, going to be honest, I'm pretty happy that I didn't have to deal with Vortex's competition anymore because it, I was just going to say it was just immense trying to deal with Vortex's competition because, like, it was next to impossible half the times to get that top HLTV slot that everyone loves so much, and I don't really care about it. The only time I actually ever beat Vortex was the last week of uh, MDL, uh, ESA Premier Season 34, I believe, or 35. I think it was 34, actually. Where I got like 6k, I got 6k viewers and then I had 3k viewers. And like, I'm like sitting there being plain as day, thinking like, thinking like, finally, like, you know, I get my time in the sun and like people are watching my stream and, you know, I'm on the top and they can't, you know, beat that in the end. Too fat, a lot of Russians in my cast as well. It was like kind of crazy because I had two guys who only understood Russian and I was pretty, a bit insane. Now, overall, let's just talk about it from Simla's point of view. I think Simla, um, it's got a probably a good idea of this. Like this is um this is a lot of things that people do forget about. You gotta realize that Prono, Go, and Squid are essentially batting for one side, which is the cast to be paid more. Now, Semler's point is basically that the talent is gonna prove what they are worth or not take the job, okay? Um Casters caring about number one HLTV. To be fair, if you're a caster, um sometimes you got sponsorships and stuff like that to manage. So you want to be taking that one number one slot, okay? Like if you don't have sponsorships to manage, that is not much of an issue. It is just a lot of an issue if you've got sponsorships and stuff to carry as well. And you've got, you know, viewership goals you need to meet for those sponsorships because they care of metrics. Like that's pretty much it. Anyways, let's talk about Semler, I guess. So Semler is like they're running a business. Yeah, you got to realize that here is also a business. And that commentators get more experience with more leverage and get higher higher rate and have more to bring to the negotiating table. So it's telling the uh, younger casters to uh, negotiate more. Now to kind of counter this point, this TO is like blacklisted a lot of experienced casters because they know that this guy's paying them below wage and they don't want the lower casters to know that. Like they don't want the lower casters to know that and kind of having a, uh, you can't discuss your pay clause. Kind of sits there, like, you know, they're trying to hide something that, you know, that casters should be paid more. And if the experienced casters found out, you know, that's what's going to happen. Now, given the fact that I did email Relog and a few others did email Relog and I was not even approached by it or wasn't even emailed back, kind of thinks that, uh, you know, something something's uh, off there, to be honest, because, like, the only experienced casters I had was Eternal J and Dweg for, like, the playoffs. And I'm actually a bit surprised that, oh... No, I'm not actually... Mm, I'm actually a bit surprised. Well, of course, they weren't paid 35 bucks, just an FYI. Like, if they did that, I told them to go jump, in my opinion. I think he's actually said that, Eternal J. Because the guy who's casting Katowice would not be casting a beer free for 35 bucks, you know? 35 euros. But anyways, uh... Uh... Samuel puts it out there. 100 euros to cast an online CS as a no-name is sick. He's right. You know, if you get 100 bucks for the playoffs, okay? The 35 and 20 or 12.5 is pretty bad. But if you're getting 100 euros to cast a, uh, no, as a no-name, that is uh, pretty decent, actually. Like, he's not wrong about that. You can probably get more casting ESEA in other games as well. Now, there's a lot of high-paying tournaments out there as well. And I'm going to tell you now, there's more casters than ever. So, you know, I think it's only going to be a few... Like, with the, with the casting industry, there's only going to be a few commentators that are going to be anywhere near like successful or be able to pay the bills and stuff. Not be able to pay the bills, but be able to, you know, essentially live in luxury off of it. And yeah, like pretty much like Simla actually talks about it as well. Like he's like, no money, no chance. Um, and basically he's saying that they should cast for exposure. Like he does kind of make that, that finger. That, like, you know, you don't get money, you don't get a chance to, like, be be exposed to people, I guess. I guess you can understand that. You know, I can understand that part of the argument, but, hey, streaming for exposure or casting for exposure, doing anything for exposure is pretty silly and undervaluing the market. Like, the other side of the coin is that you're basically destroying your market. You can be destroying your market, as per se, by undervaluing yourself or valuing yourself, like, you know, at a lower rate 
then like people were being paid that lower rate or offered that lower rate or they offer you that lower rate knowing you'll do it for that lower rate okay like it's kind of frowned upon because it's, it's essentially scalping on a race to the bottom and a lot of people complain about that like this undercutting stuff was pretty rampant in na before it stopped and all the na casters actually talked to each other and people might say oh that never happened it did <laughs> because it got all the way to me that NA, the NAC and casters weren't working together so they all work together now like they all work together like 10 and like i see them all talking trying to all gassing each other up and i'm like finally like you know finally that sort of thing was done because it was getting ridiculous now there was a rumor floating around about about upmind casting a beer for 15. i had the rumor like the rumor was uh beer one for 15. this was ages back and it's not even involving i, I don't think it involves upmind actually but like the rumor was that someone was casting a beer one at e5 for 15. That was the rumor, not a BO3 Valorant. I don't think, uh, like, as I said previously, like, you know, you can quote me on this. I think Upmines went to Valorant because he makes a lot more money than he can charge a lot more because the, the TOs, well, hopefully can pay him. Like, that's the point. Like, you know, I know a lot of people, some people don't like Upmind. I'm aware of that. I think he's all right. You know, I think he's a good guy. But like, you know, there was uh, rumors floating around. The reason why I say that is because basically Squid's, another one this is why you got to take everything into you know with a grain of salt because squid has done a sort of thing with efl now i have no idea about the story okay and yeah so i have no idea what efl happens like basically castles will take advantage of exposure dollar in the future blah 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 18 hours no one got paid um the tournament by the way the Prize pools, just a, you know, a major step because Squid does point it out. There was no actual prize pools and no money and he didn't get paid himself. And, and basically, I think it was like a community event, which they should have actually said instead of, uh, I'm going to tell you now with VFL, instead of promising that you get paid one day, you should have just said, hey, this is a community run event. Like if you, if it honestly was the best policy here, you wouldn't, ha you wouldn't have up mind calling your dumb asses out. Okay. Like just don't like go to say now, like, you know, oh, I hope to be, you know, big league one day. But at the moment, like, it's kind of like a community-driven effort. Like, it's going to be, you know, everyone's... Like, if people want to do it, they do it. You know, that kind of thing, okay? Like, you know, if, if you said you want to get paid a lot and stuff like that, and, you know, I mean, I think that should be the red flag here. High exposure. The moment someone says exposure, just get the fuck out. Um, because basically, the company's getting exposure. You're not, okay? Like, unless you can, you know, put on your own channel and stuff like that um so pretty much this was like two to three years ago as he says uh mitch conky has his own story i mean look at all the australia casts that have their own story about this shit man and there's the uh good old this is what i talk about as well you know how i talked about vortex about this if i the same deal where they had hundreds of people live like this is why like i fi i find myself like every time i see that from like a cast or a caster i'm just a bit nervous i'm just like how can they have that much viewership like you know I don't have that much viewership when I go live. And you know why I say that? It's because it's just like, it's really weird. Like when I cast ESA AU Premier before the betting agency started going off, I never got like over hundred views. The only game where I got hundred views before I started was Endpoint v Mouse Sports. And that's because, and that's because I DM'd the Endpoint guy. I think his name is Dan. Fuck, I forget his fucking name. Oh my God. The endpoint dude. Oh my god. But I DM'd his org and be like, dude, I'll be casting the endpoint mouse sports dude game, dude. So make sure you direct your guys to here. And that's why I was getting 150 and also mouse sports as well. And that's why I was getting 150 and it got 5k viewers. Like that's the only time I got it. All the other times, it was just between 20 to 30. So that's why, like, you know, that's why I understand that uh, Chris's comment, who I do I have co-casted with on Epicenter. This is what rubs me the wrong way, okay? Like, you know, strong legs um comes in. I I think Squid needs to stop accusing people of dumb shit because I can tell you now, you can actually go to an ESCA page and see that Stronglegs was fired because of uh, unnecessary risks. He wasn't uh, fired because of match fixing. Okay, like you get you go to a simple ESCA website. Like I'll basically put it on here. ESCA Stronglegs. It basically says he was fired because of unnecessary risks, which is not match fixing. Okay, not match fixing at all. Okay, and you can even look at his Wikipedia page for God's sake. Like, let me just put up here, okay? Like it says here. Let's highlight it. Strong Legs was banned from ESCA Network for betting on MDL matches while being an ESCA caster. And then you can go look at the uh, statement here. 
And the reason why maybe you got confused is that Effies and Cardiac were actually playing Valorant, by the way. Um, and essentially, like, what happened here was people were betting, blah, blah, blah. And Stronglegs also got found out that he was betting on matches as well. He, yeah, he got, you know, he got bet on a castle here. Okay, so Squid's thinking he's involved with this. Uh, he ain't. It says here. Um, he pl like the thing is getting confused. He plays bets as a family member as well, talking about another match and a lost. Um, he was not directly involved in the match. ESL says some partnerships, blah blah, conflict of interest, and they quote unnecessary risks. Okay, so that's what he got done by. And a simple search would have got him out of that and been like, you know, hey, that ain't true. You got done for necessary risks, and of course, conflict of interest because insiders shouldn't be betting. And blah, blah blah. So a lot of people have been a Satan, and has been and stuff like that. And a lot of people think he's, you know, view botted to hell, blah blah blah. And like basically both these people, like I tell you now, like both these people aren't perfect. Like, you know, Kieran and Squid aren't perfect. I don't think Squid does anymore. I think Squid's more dedicated and stuff like that. He's learned a lot from that. Um and like I got to tell you now, like a lot of these casters who are like just throwing sludge at each other at the moment, they're kind of got like their moments where they've not exactly been the best people to other people either, okay? Like that's pretty much it so far. My my opinion on the casting stuff is like a bit of similar. Like, you know, I do want people to be, the casters to be paid a bit more. I think casters really, really need to value their worth in uh, like by streaming themselves. If they don't stream themselves, go get a uh, mid, uh, minimum wage job. Um, if you do not get paid minimum wage or the same wage as you do, as you would work, um then you shouldn't be casting a game okay like you don't cast that game okay you can, if you're casting as a hobby it doesn't really matter too much but you shouldn't be casting that game okay like if you really really want to make the they all pay more if if they're paying you less than minimum wage for like the maximum hours let's say free, let's say bo3 takes three hours if that's less than your minimum wage then you don't cast them if it's less than what you get from streaming then you don't cast them you do it on your own channel okay because remember at the end of the day you cast on their channel and you're not being paid, like, that's like in three hours of subs or job that you are not doing and not being paid for. Now, I, I can understand, oh, I want to get my foot in the door and stuff like that. Yes, there's a lot of ways to do that in CSGO. You can cast ESA Advanced. You can uh, get into the ESA Partnership Program and cast Premier. You can cast some of those tournaments here and there. But the thing is, you got to promote your brand. Now, a lot of these tournament organizers don't let you do that, okay? Like, let's be real. Like, a lot of people go, like, exposure, exposure, exposure. The only exposure you're getting is from the company. Like, the company exposure, the company's getting exposure. You're not getting it, okay? Like, you're not getting it at all. Let's be real. A lot of people, like, you know, say, hey, you know, he's getting a bit of exposure here because he's casting a big game, a big matchup. And, like, dude, like, my biggest... I'll tell you now. My biggest uh, exposure moment was uh, Rops falling off in Vertigo, okay? That's my, still my highest view clip of 7.7k, okay? Still my highest clip is of that, okay? And uh, I'm not relatively known in the casting scene at all, despite casting all my matches for free and casting a lot of Flashpoint, Dreamhack, Open, and Closed Qualifiers. And still no one knows who the fuck I am, okay? Like, do you see in the threads, like, when they go, like, oh, hi, this person, hi, this person... You notice that my name is never fucking there? <laughs> and then and you also know the fact that the all these other casters that cast for like Snow Sweet Snow and stuff like that, their names aren't there. It's always like, you know, Eternal J, Dweg, Vince, Dust. A lot of people know in the community for doing their other stuff. Okay? So this is what I'm talking about the stream stuff as well. Like if you stream and do another thing like CSGO or WoW or anything like that. Let's just say you get 50 subs, okay? You get 50 subs an hour because, I don't know, you're semi-popular, whatever it is. You're not going to be casting games ever, okay? Like, if, you, if you're getting, like, 50 subs, that's probably about... Oh, fuck. $250, $125 per standard Twitch agreement. Like, like if you get that much an hour, like, your BO1 rate has to be above that amount, that $125, because you got to remember, like, you're losing ad revenue, you're losing potential subs, you're losing potential viewers to cast on someone else's channel, okay? So this is what Semler is getting at as well, that is you gotta know your worth, okay? One of the casters I know, StarCraft 2, always mention them. They were getting 50 plus dollars from subs and they're only getting $10 for casting a uh, StarCraft 2 game or series, but it was dollars for a series, which could take an hour and stuff like that. And you also had to deal with players not wanting him casting either, you know, that kind of thing. And you know, he only got paid like 10 bucks a game. So what, what do you think he did? 
He just stopped casting StarCraft 2. Just told ESL, no, nah, I don't want to cast it anymore. I'm going to play, you know, I'm going to do my own content and then build my brand that way. Like, what do you think? How do you think Maui Snake gone to uh, Epicenter and Flashpoint? Like, he's never, I don't think he's casted, well, I don't think, has he casted a game actually? I'm not sure actually. Maui Snake's going to kill me if, if I get this wrong, but I don't think he's casted a game. He's been very good on his side content. I think he's an analyst. Like, he did a lot of side content. I mean, Hawker's got the same thing as well. Like, a lot of these big casters have become big. At the start, they would have been like, oh, I just cast big events and that's easy. No, you got to actually do some side content, some good quality side content as well, actually contribute to the sector. And, I don't know, just act like a real person and have, like, you know, your own opinions to stack by it other than just, like, parroting the same, you know, opinion ad verbatim from someone else. Um, and similar, like, you know, similar argument, I do respect it. I don't, I got to say, I don't think it's the right way at times as well. It's going to encourage practices where like a TO is, it can be predatory by making sure no one else knows what their wage is. So no one knows it's underpaying them. Um, I don't like that. I feel, I prefer transparency is the best policy. Like regardless of like confidentiality, like if you don't feel it's, ugh, I know we get killed from a lot of business for this, but if you don't feel it should be confidential, like this is like subjective, like as a moral standpoint, like if it's like trade secrets, of course, keep them fucking hidden because you're representing a company. They need those trade secrets. But if it's like something like, you know, a tech pause, a reason for it and stuff like that, you want to kind of disclose it to the audience so they know what's going on. So they don't, you know, walk away or nothing like that. Um, if a player doesn't want to cast me a game, problem is StarCraft 2, it's different. StarCraft 2 is you have to be in a lobby to cast a game. And the player, does, player has the power to kick you out as well in the lobby. So, you know, that kind of thing. But either way, like, you know, similar like you got to know what you're worth. As I said before, like you gotta check your channel and stuff like that. Would it would it be better rather you streaming the game instead rather than working for the company to stream the game? Like, just remember that, okay? Just remember that. And also, I gotta say as well, um, there's a few other tweets as well. With where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um. There's a post from Misty, which was the person who previously managed a thing, who was wondering how they got paid. But I don't think it's there anymore. But I say, like, a lot of people have got involved in this kind of thing. Oh, there it is. Found it. Okay. This is guy I respect a lot, Zesh and stuff like that. And, yeah, like, you know, he actually wanted to uh, say that as well. And I gotta say, Zesh is a very good person. He helped me out with my guide kind of a lot. And, you know, he's, he's kind of a good guy and stuff like that. I'm not sure if Misty actually responded and stuff like that to this. But, yeah, like, you know, there's been a lot of variety of different responses and stuff like that here. Um, and, yeah, I've had on Squid a little, to be fair. Like, both of these people who had, like, basically, like I say, a snowball fight or mud fight are not exactly the best people. Like, not exactly the best people because they've made mistakes in the past and stuff like that. And, you know, people are at fault to an extent. Now, overall, like, you know, I, I feel like casters should be at least paid above minimum wage, okay? Like, some open teams, I can understand, you know, the orgs being small and stuff like that, they can't really offer you too much, you know, to cast a beer one. Like, I've been offered 15 to 20 bucks to cast a beer one, and I'm going to be real, real honest that it ain't worth it, unfortunately. And I just say no. I, You know, sometimes, I, you know, with ESA Premier, I just cast it because I want to help build the brand of AUCSGO, and it'll be profitable for me as well if i do so and sometimes i have to walk away being like well at the same time i've got to i've got to take care of myself like you know i've got to take care of myself like, even though i've got a full-time job like it this casting and streaming does impact my full-time job as well because i'm a bit tired at work and stuff like that so yeah anyways i've completely gone off topic but either way like overall with this thing is a know your worth b don't accept casting gigs because you want exposure for lesser money because sometimes there are people using you and you're gonna you could drag your industry down as well. B, if you can, cast it on your own channel. Okay, like there's a lot of games that people do want to watch. You cast on your own channel and promote your own socials and stuff like that. D, network in the industry. Because if you know what other people are being paid and stuff like that, you can also negotiate that leverage as well. Be like, oh, this is how you know X person normally played. I'm similar experience, so can I get that much? Um, D and E, if you want to get known. You should be doing every single qualifier if you've got an IP 
Like, if you got an IP in a spot on HL TV, like, come on. Um, what else? Oh, man. Hey, so I'll wait for you guys to say Benny Cage. The women's league I'm going to run in fall and spring for you. Oh, yeah, it's going to be spring for me. What else? What else? What else? To be fair, I'm going to say a lot of my advice about like people by branding and stuff like that, this casting and stuff like that is going to matter if you're a person who's building up a league and wants to build up a league, shares the same vision. If you're going for casting as a career, you should be using those rules of measuring your worth, okay? If you're trying to help out as a community project and stuff like that and a hobby, you don't you don't pay attention to it because you're not there for it. If people blame you for accepting lower casting rate, uh casting uh you know, lower casting revenue, and people are blaming you for accepting it, like it's not your fault. Like if you're casting an event with no prize pool, a little league that wants to grow and tells you saying straight up being like, well, it's not the best rate, but we can't offer much, you know, it's only a thousand dollar prize pool and stuff like that. Like, you got, of course you're going to get casters who do it in a hobby and stuff like that, probably no research and stuff like that because you're offering such a low wage. But at the end of the day, it's just like, well, it's a community tournament. Like, people are, you know, spending their money. Like, you know, just... What I'm saying here is like if you're a hobby cast, like if you accept those kind of jobs, it's not that bad. Like some comp like some companies do have to be called out when they're still paying the people shit wages when they should be paid more. Like they're not lifting up the as their promises. So I don't think it's a bad thing, Benny Cage, you're paying like fifteen dollars a beer one, fifteen dollars US, which is I think it's above minimum wage for a lot of states. But at the same time, like, you know, you gotta make sure you up your wages as the league gets bigger and stuff like that, and as the league gets sponsors. Like, I think a lot of people actually talked about in that thread saying that, like, you know, I expect a league of no sponsors, stuff like that, to be paying wages like that. You know, not a league with sponsors and stuff like that. Like, they should be pay getting paid a bit more because it's a bigger, it's a bigger tournament, probably more re preparation and research going to it, bigger teams, you know, potentially a lot more ver revenue for the uh, or, uh the company overall. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big gray area with a lot of, like, things to discuss about, like, the... The play, the people involved aren't exactly, you know, of course, a beaming light of, you know, integrity. I mean, I think, I think Squid's learned his lesson from a long time ago, and Kieran still hasn't learned his lesson. Okay, still hasn't learned his lesson from underpaying a lot of casters. And yeah, overall, like everyone's gonna learn a good lesson. Everyone sees a lot of paychecks now, and people are gonna have to learn how to negotiate. Now, overall, like. What's what this is gonna do? This is gonna put like Squid and Pro like Pro No Go like into the spotlight as like you know they kind of people who like whistle blew on this and stuff like that. You know they're gonna be like those kind of people like they be known. That's what's gonna happen here, okay? Like you know they're gonna prom they get promote the TV show being oh you can come onto Elo Heaven and stuff like that. They cast like that's what's gonna happen. People kind of do this because Forward said basically this is how you drum up dramas. You make up. You do a call out, people start watching your podcast, you get bums on seats, and then, you know, you can be like, you use your view of shit metrics and stuff like that. And, you know, it's business, folks. It's how business works. It's free real estate, okay? Now, my, my thing, like, you know, my, my, my podcast is just to be real with you guys. Like, you know, what? it's a bit of column A and column B here. Like, the casters need to be, like, you know, a bit responsible and may, maybe say, ah, uh, I won't accept this job instead, you know? Okay, I'll just go stack shelves at Woolies, okay? Like, you know, I get like 20 bucks for just stacking the shelves and like sitting around most of the day. So might as well do that, you know, instead of working in esports. Now, a lot of people may be thinking e working esports is the dream and stuff like that. Reality is, is that it's not exactly a dream when you get into it because like you got to be working countless of hours prepping. Jobs are kind of difficult to get. And like, you know, you got a lot of people to compete with. It's kind of like the entertainment industry where like probably 1% of people are going to make it and get a decent living out of it. Um, I mean, there's a lot of casters who've been here for four or five years and still haven't got their big break yet. I mean, look at Valorant, for example. I mean, look at all those casters on that Valorant desk. I mean, Sean Gares never got a big break in CSGO. He's now in Valorant. Like, uh, who else? There's Prius as an observer. You know, he's there as well. Like, there's a lot of CSGO talent that's on Valorant because they never got the big break in here as well. 
And the funny one is like, this is the worst, weirdest one. Is like Vince is not even getting a shot at Valor, which is actually, I just don't understand it. And I don't, I'm going to say now, I don't think Vince is going to get a shot at Valorant, to be honest. After what he said, I think everyone's going to try and use that as a justification to be like, oh, he complained about TOs. That's bad. He shouldn't be doing that. It's just like, well, he's going to lose regardless, okay? Like, he, he doesn't get a job because of bullshit behind the scenes or he doesn't get a bullshit, when, doesn't get a job when he fucking, like, chirps up about it. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't going to win either way. So, you know, might as well just put it out in the sunlight that, hey, something's fishy behind here but anyways let's just get up to the next story okay so this is even worse news for flashpoint yeah flashpoint gonna have some some teams gonna be lost here in my opinion given that the louvre agreement because 100 fees withdrew from south uh, counter-strike they need to find one more team okay one more beautiful team Priest can get a job number one anywhere he wants. He can. And that's what I meant. Like, you know, he can go to Valorant, get a job there. Very easy for him. Like, that's what I mean. Like, people who don't get the chances at CSGO go elsewhere. Like, they go to Valorant. Like, that's the point. That's what I'm trying to say. It's that a lot of the talent, like, they have really, really good talent, but never got to see this uh, light of day in CSGO because only 1% of people can get up there to make it. And obviously, these other people went elsewhere to kind of do their thing. I mean, so we go here. So basically, uh, ESL launching to find a new team. I mean, all the Flashpoint teams will be chomping at the bit for this. Like, I, I, like they're going to be there, okay? Chomping at the bit for this. Next up is, well, I'm going to say now, like, I'm trying to think who's uh, on the list for this at the moment for the Louvre agreement. Let me see who it is. Because I know 100 Thieves is on it. I'm going to say, like... I wonder which organization they'll sign up, okay? Van Steely is a big name for me. He didn't get a chance to see us go. Yeah, I know Van Steely cast a lot with uh, Miss Harvey because Miss Harvey asked me first, but I couldn't do it because I worked when she casted. So, uh, kind of a missed opportunity for me, but that's because, like, you know, I'm at work and stuff like that. Um, then she then she talked to Van Steely, and Van Steely, of course, has, you know, done extremely well. I think Van Steely comes from Rainbow Six, I believe, Siege. Um, now making it in Valorant, I, I didn't see Van Celia's name in there. I must've not, I must've been blind or whatever, but I saw Sean Gares. So, uh, maybe he's in there. Okay. Like a lot of the, uh, big casts are in there as well. Now, overall, as you can see here, there's, there's the people here. There's Astralis, Complexity, Ents, Harvu hates this. EG, FaZe, Fnatic, G2, Mouse, Navi, Nip, Team Liquid, Vitality, and now 100 Thieves. So you're going to find a new member of this. I'm not. It's my birthday today, right? It's not my birthday today. My birthday's on Monday, but I'm having Among Us lobby on Friday for the birthday bash. But, you know, it'd be my weekend at least. Or well, birthday weekend, I guess. In my opinion, I feel like... Uh, I have a feeling that a CIS team's going to get this, and I feel it's going to be like either like Gambit or something like that's going to get the spot, given how Gambit's played pretty well, or Virtus Pro. But yeah, a lot of people said like, a lot of these CIS orgs don't have much money, but I feel like Virtus Pro could... Definitely get it, but I'm not terribly too sure, okay? Uh, next up is Complexity and Heroic. Go to Dreamhack, Dreamhack Masters Spring. Um, This was kind of expected for Heroic. Okay. Veli came from Super Rainbow Six. I got those two Vs confused. But either way, Heroic and Complexity opened up their like, accounts for qualifying. To be fair, I expected Heroic. Complexity, I didn't really expect that much because that bottom half of the bracket was insane. But the biggest uptake came from here is this goddamn Bulgarian pug team. There are a few good players in there. Call on, took down OG and Clown9. Now I'm going to say now, like, OG and Clown9 to lose to a pug Bulgarian team, that is a bit of an issue, okay? That is a bit of an issue if you're losing to a... Uh, If you're losing to a team like that. Oh, I just got word that, yeah, Van Silly was a CSGO cast. Okay, I thought it was a Rainbow Six, but that's a Billy cast, which is the another person in the scene. I got the Bs right. confused. Thank you for the follow, Darkly Dink. Now, I am going to be honest. I have no idea how OG and Cloud9 lost to this team. Like, I have little to no idea. And I know I've, I went through this last week where people were complaining about, like, no-name teams getting through to open qualifiers and then I'm losing beer ones. And I'm sitting there going, like, Guys, if you're losing beer ones to no-name teams, like, the problem's on you. It's not on the no-name teams. 
Thank you for the follow. Uh, one, no two, no one, whatever the name is. I God, I can't pronounce it. But like, I'm sitting there going, like, you know, it's the onus is on you at the end of the day. Like, if you're scrimming and practicing stuff like that, you should be able to beat these teams quite easily. I mean, you're you're on the highest skill level for a re reason, and I have no idea. Cloud Nine I think the experiment's gone completely wrong. Well. I don't think, uh, to be fair, I think Cloud9 blocks it didn't go very well at all. And they're still kind of like looking for their like Peggy, uh, not looking for what they are going to be. So Extra Soul, another org that's gone through. OCE leads his team with JT. I think this is actually a pretty cool logo actually. Marky, JT, Sonic, Fang and all that stuff. Um, They get past the Bad News Bears. And yeah. So they go undefeated to qualify. Done, done, done. And as you can see here, here's the team spirit winning the DreamHack Open and Pain also winning the Open as well. It was actually kind of funny. Uh, Pain qualified all through the Open qualifiers only to get told at the end of it, since they won DreamHack Open NA, they don't have to qualify for the event. And the entire time that they were in those uh, Open qualifiers, they were essentially wasting their time because they already had a DreamHack Open spot. They had a, a closed qualifier spot that was replaced by Recon 5 in the end. Now, Ovo's joined Evil Geniuses just as Ethan left. I think actually uh, Tyler this this time. I mean, it kind of expected to be honest. It's kind of odd. Oh, it's kind of it's kind of funny because like Ethan, I think Ethan's gonna have a bit of a miss here going to Valor in my opinion. I'm not totally too sure, but I'll see what happens. Uh Ace of Pro League her heroic with refresh and Silzush. To the surprise of nobody, they cleaned up Fun Plus Phoenix, and uh, Kadian made a tweet to uh, Fun Plus Phoenix so being like, you sure you got the right roster? Like, you sure you purchased the right roster? Like, a bit of a dig at Fun Plus Phoenix? And I thought that was pretty funny, to be honest. That's, that's, that was actually some good banter. And not to mention, he put, like, uh, photos of his teammates on the other players' faces because, you know, it was, it was basically a different heroic team being snappy as tag and stuff like that. And um, I thought that was a good tweet from Canyons, good banter. I know someone's going to have, you know, be butthurt about it. But, yeah, like, you know... Good on Heroic to stay the Hunter feet. I'm going to say Heroic's probably a team to watch out for, given the fact that, uh, you know, they got some good riflers now. They got Refresh and Sush, probably the two best riflers out of that Mad Lions roster. Now, on the other end, I think it started with uh, Extra Soul and Triumph scoring a few wins. The Funny Deer team scoring a few wins. Cynic's actually been working well on this team as well. Like, Cynic player in, I believe, was Recon 5. Working really, really well in Triumph at the moment. And it's good to see that Triumph is staying in to his competition here. And Payne having a rare loss, given the fact they don't lose that much in NA. But anyways, next up is the South America spot. To be fair, I gotta say, like, I, I do know Sharks, but I've never heard of Imperial before. And I probably should cast some South America CS one day to get to know, like, all these teams, essentially. Now, another thing is Big and Renegade have been effectively eliminated. And Heroic and Complexity are fighting for top spot, okay? Um, Renegades just, like I tell you now, they, was, they, were, they weren't good enough. Like, they just weren't good enough. They were just always that, not like not as in like, you know, getting flogged or anything like that. They were just a little bit of a step behind everyone else. Like, let's be real. They were just a bit of a step behind. They weren't exactly the best team there. And they did pretty decent, like, fighting against some of these tier one teams. Like, but at the end of the day, that's going to go back. And, you know, put the effort in again. Uh, I don't think Renegade... I'm not sure if Renegades won a single map in the end. I think they did. But, like, you know, a lot of BO3 has got to be worked on here. For them. Big being eliminated is actually a big one as well. I think the only team that Big beat... I think the only team that Big could beat is Renegades. But as you can see here, like, you know, they're out of the running. It's basically between OG and Fun Plus Phoenix for that third spot. And I believe they're versing each other. Yeah, they are. And, yeah... Probably second or third best behind MRBR female and 9Z. Okay. In the South America region. Next up is Liquid Extra Soul Book Player Sports in DreamHack Open. Basically, I think they beat Triumph and Bad News Bears. And, they're, you know, I'm going to say now, like, Team Liquid was always going to win this. To be honest, they're going to probably win this in a canter. Bit surprised that Bad News Bears, after playing so well on Train, they lose it on Dust 2 and Nuke, which I'm a bit surprised about, given that, you know, definitely got the better aimers in you know, dark, uh, bad news bears. And last but not least, Lecro joins Dignitas. And this is the interesting part, okay? Like, they did exactly what Heroic did, where they go, oh, Harry is going to leave. And then they pick up Lecro. 
This is probably a good addition for Dignitas because they need an IGL really, really badly and Lecro is a very, very good IGL. So it's good to see that Lecro actually found a home, even though Dignitas is basically a retirement home, as someone actually smartly put it, because it's got Forest Fireberg, Halsert, Keep, and Lecro. Now, Harry, I have no idea where he's going to go. He can't really go back to Nordavin because Nordavin picked up a new roster. So it can be very interesting for Harry where he's going to go at the moment. Like, I know he's benched. Um, to be fair to the other teams in the tournament, they're playing Liquid on tough on a few maps. Oh, of course, like, I'm not expecting to win. I'm expecting Liquid to win all of this in the end. Like, I'm full on expecting Liquid to win all of these uh, competitions in the end. Uh, now, overall, you know, summing up what's been uh, happening... So, uh, what's been happening, like, with the cast and stuff and stuff like that? You guys got to kind of realize that it's not as, like, you know, all doom and gloom. Like, I think a lot of casters will take this away and try to find, like, a way to leverage themselves to get more money from TOs. Like, currently at the moment, a lot of TOs essentially don't even know what to offer, or even teams don't even know what to offer. And to be fair, though, like, a lot of teams offer, like, you know, $15 or $20 because, like, they want to, you know, have some incentive to get a cast to cast their games. Like, I had an open guy offer me, like, 10 euros to cast his team's game and how his team's going to be in advance next season. I'm just, like, telling him, like, nah, man. First of all, it's uh, 3 a.m. And secondly, it's just, like, I know this is never going to happen. Like, this team is, you know, never going to magically make advance and I suddenly become super popular because I was casting this team the entire way through. Just fairy tale like that, like, never... Fairy tales like that just never happen, man. And a lot of industry is more from hard work and stuff like that. It isn't from, you know, backing a team out of pure loyalty to get to the top. Now, at the, at the same time as well, like, you know, some sometimes the TOs can't offer too much, like, you know, because their price pool is pretty small. So that's just when, like, you let the lesser known casters get onto the event because it's probably not your pay grade to take it. Um, What else? The other thing as well, like, of course, there's a few people that need to be taken out of the scene. And I feel like, I feel like Kieran should be one of them, given what was going on with Vortex and a few other things that have come to light. That, like, a person like that shouldn't be managing talent without, like, digesting the um, seriousness of what they're doing. And, like, you know, I think they've got the wrong set of mind, got the wrong mindset coming into, you know, CSGO ready to like scam and undercut people because people have done it to you. It's probably not the greatest mindset. And, you know, I think a lot of people who are, you know, trying to do this to other cars and stuff like that and literally trying to cheat the system, they're going to kind of be like uh, recycled out of the casting scene eventually. I mean, a lot of these casters have been causing these issues and uh, have, you know, some sort of verifiable proof that they're not exactly great for the scene. Essentially, they're just being barred. Like, you know, they have, they have to manage themselves and other talent. And, like, you know, they have to be involved with the tournament to cast at the tournament. Shows a bit of a... Uh, shows a bit of a, like, you know, the industry knows who you are and you're never going to get hired for events because people know who you are and know what you've done. Now, a lot of people complain about it. Like, you know, there's cronyism and the kind of thing. This is kind of the difference from cronyism. It's like when people see you by your deeds... Like, this is what, this is what networking does. If you're going to have, like, a really, really bad, like, if, you, if you're poor at networking and actively screwing other people over, it's going to have a negative consequence where you have a negative network where people, you won't be hired for specific events because you've pissed off the wrong people, okay? And people talk that as, as it's cronyism. I kind of don't think that's cronyism. Cronyism is basically you have to, like, join X or otherwise you're gone kind of thing. Like, you ha you're forced to join it, join it, that kind of thing. And I don't think cronyism exists too much in CSGO, up to an extent. Like, not not maliciously. It's more like, I know this guy before. G'day, Trash. Hope you having a good day, my dude. It's like, I know this guy. Therefore, like, you know. Since I know this guy, and he can do a good job, and I've cast him before, he, he can come on. It's fine. It's not exactly nepotism. It's basically saying like, hey, I know a guy. It's called networking. That's what you got to do in this industry. A lot of people complain that's not like an open audition. I'm going to say now, I don't think TOs have enough time to have open auditions. 
Like, just send your application in. You talk to the people in the scene, talk to the people who are in the tournament, and maybe you can, you know, put your foot in the door. Like, seriously, like, I know one of the back staffers of Blast. Like, if I wanted to know anything at Blast, I just DM this guy, and this guy will tell me everything about it, okay? Because we're good mates. Like, he's the one that told me that, uh, that the guy who was saying that, you know, on Reddit, that Blast paid for everything. Uh, that's how I found out the guy was lying. Because I just DM'd him, like, oh, did you get all this? And he's like, no, nah, they didn't. Like, they only got a mic and that's it. Like, basically told me exactly what they got. And it's just like, there you go. And he's like, it's public information as well. That's what he said. It's like, come on, dude. But yeah, you know. Um, yeah, that's essentially it. And at the end of the day, that's what you got to kind of do. It's like all about networking, all about talking to people and not burning your bridges. Like if you're wondering why you're not succeeding at something is because you're not having other people to help. And that's kind of like my situation at the moment because I'm too shy to ask people to help. Okay. With observing and producing and stuff like that, because I'm not even sure how to like even assign the jobs and like what to do and stuff like that. It's kind of crazy for me. Like, you know, someone producing, someone streaming to my stream and me not controlling it. To be fair, I've had that before. It was actually uh, kind of relaxing. So maybe I should probably do that. And also as well, I've never had an observer in the game either. So observers kind of new to me as well. So, you know, that kind of stuff. But overall, it doesn't get back but parts of my main point. Let's just, let's just summarize it quickly, okay? Casters, know your worth, okay? If you've got your own stream, you've got your own brand, and you make more money, then you're being offered to cast a tournament. Put it to the side, okay? Build up your brand, okay? The higher you build your brand, the more you can ask in the bigger tournaments in the future. Um, that's one area. Obviously, that works. Um, what else? Secondly, um, call out, obviously, bad TOs and bad people in the scene. Like, that's a good thing to call out. Like, if a person's offering you, like, minimum wage, and they're not telling any of the other casters, and they seem to be preying on newer casters to cast, like, kind of big events for, like, really really little money just you know you do call it out be like hang on guys you're not offering a good rate to these people like your prize pool is 300k and you're offering 35 dollars speak up third join casters collective if you're a caster okay it really helps help get everyone all their pay rates and stuff like that and you'll be helped immensely with that as well a lot of good people in there as well have been casting quite a while i can tell you now probably not a lot of veteran casters are going to be in there because a lot of veteran casters don't need like a, a unionist per se to really stick up for them because they can stick up for themselves. They've probably got agents and stuff like that working on them as well. They've already got that group around them that's going to push it through. I mean, for example, like, you know, On Fire, Moses and stuff like that. Like, On Fire is probably an agency-specific for casters. So they've probably got that back already. So Cast Collect is probably like a community movement for it. And also the fourth one is um, sometimes backing a crowd to like be like, you should offer more and stuff like that. Isn't exactly the isn't exactly one hundred percent foolproof and always a good thing to do because sometimes the the tournament's just too small to offer a bigger uh, value to casters, and sometimes the casters got to add value to themselves and take it to the talent manager that we're going to get you in a lot of money and that we're good casters we've cast a lot of quality events and I've got a lot of you know things under my belt that can back up that you know had some great casts and stuff like that and to get paid more like learn to negotiate. Now, it's not all the smaller casters' fault because some of the smaller casters have no fucking idea of who's being paid because no one actually discloses their pay rates, which is a big frustration in the industry. And someone's like, oh, I don't discuss my pay rates in public. It's like, dude, like, a lot of people got to realize this sooner or later. You're going to have to discuss your pay rates in public to make sure that, like, you know, in public and, in, you know, with other casters. Otherwise, this same shit's going to happen again over and over and over again. Now they get they do justify saying that people undercut them. Um it's true in this industry, people do undercut, like they get your wage and undercut it. And I've seen that happen before. But like, you know, seriously, if, if you got like legitimate good guys and not like undercutting guys trying to run around trying to go with exposure, the at the end of the day, those kind of people will be probably ran out of town eventually. Like they're gonna realize there's not enough money in it. All this exposure they are supposedly getting is not good exposure. And exposure dollars actually don't mean anything. And, like, a lot of people shouldn't really worry about it. Like, they should really form a collective, you know, get the right offers and stuff like that and get some good money instead of undercutting each other. Undercutting each other. I'm tired. I think I just ran. I think I just... That was... That made no sense. But just talk to the other casters. You know, throw a DM out. Go to the cast collective. You know, you can't have to put your pay rates public. You can't be like... 
everyone's going to make their pay rates public and never put yours public. Otherwise, we're going to have the same situation happen again where people are being paid shit wages to cast BO3s and BO1s because you want to keep your rates hidden, but everyone else's hit rates have to be open. Like, that's not how this game's played. It's either full transparency or no transparency. And that's going to be... That's why we're going to leave it here today. I'm going to go play some uh, Valheim. Thank you guys for being here for Chill Time with Jose. Hope you guys enjoyed the conversation. Share the video. Subscribe to my YouTube if you guys enjoyed it. Um, overall, just casting and stuff like that. Uh, don't really be, like, discouraged. Like, you know, know your value. Know your worth. Like, before you go cast to someone else. And know what income you generate. That's another thing as well. Know what income you generate on your own stream. And maybe just bolster it up with a bit of loading because, you know, there could be like ads. There could be potential like exposure you're not getting, but the company's getting instead of you and stuff like that. And you'll be all peachy. Um, obviously, nut out the bad actors in the scene. You know, we need to nut out those bad actors, get them away because bad actors will pollute your scene and will make your scene unprofitable and basically will turn people away. Okay, like, you know, sponsors and brands can realize, ew, this person's running, he's a bit dodgy. You know, a bit of a scummy and stuff like that. And then some of these sponsors won't, you know, come and talk to you and stuff like that. And that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for coming. Subscribe. And this is Jose out for Chill Time. Peace out.